Okay, hello again. So, I've had a break from Pathologic, but... And I'm, and I'm like in the middle of a couple other Let's Plays, but uh, I just... I just miss it, you know? I need it back in my life. The Changeling route is waiting for me. And this is the moment. Let's do this. Changeling. Clara had the dream. A foggy morning. Having passed the wicked gate, she is now dawdling somewhere, piles of dry leaves rustling in her wake. A familiar voice calls out to her. She lifts her eyes and sees her own twin sister point at an old man convulsing and weeping in unbearable agony. Clara darts for the man to save him with her healing touch, but so does her sister. The girls exchange confused glances. This is the story of a thief girl who has chosen her own past, ceased to be the instrument of blind fate, and refashioned herself into a free miracle worker. Clara wakes up. Could the dream have been prophetic? She has prophetic dreams often. She's no longer surprised by them. She knows that they are sent by the powers that want to warn the Herald of what the future holds for her. There were a lot of clues hinting at the veracity of the message. She does indeed know how to treat those in pain with her miraculous hands. She is indeed willing to ease their suffering. She truly strives to do the right thing. She loves her fellow beings. The girl is eager to do good deeds, even if that requires her to go through pain and hardships. Changeling wakes up at the edge of a pit in the ground. Sleep hasn't brought her comfort. Her back and legs ache as though she has walked many miles. Her hands are covered in mud. There are traces of dried blood on her bare knees. It's dark. The dawn is a few hours away. Mm. God, it's so fast. What the hell? Why would they call me a thief, pray tell? What did I steal? Why does the law detest me so? The only thing I remember is that I am an old law and will forever be persecuted. Was I really that good a thief, I wonder? I have nothing of value, just myself and these rags I am wearing. My crime is horrendous still. I am beyond redemption. Back in the day, every heart was open before me. Now, whatever door I approach is slammed in my face. This is terrifying. Where should I run? With whom shall I seek shelter? Shall I find that I stole and gave back? Shall I find what I stole and gave back? Who will agree to take it off my hands? Who will answer my questions, if not you? Day one, in which the changeling finally finds her sister, thus confirming the prophecy of the twin angels. Sure is a shallow grave. Hmm. Oi, you're one swift appear swift appearer, a child, sweet child. Such thin see-through palms you've got, a magnificent little hands, so extraordinary, and already blackened and reddened all over. How very evocative. How did I end up here? 
You crawled out of a grave, sweet child. Or maybe clawed your way right out of the bowels of the earth with your fingernails. Couldn't tell from over here. The mask diminishes my field of view a bit. Dear me, and what was I doing in there? And who are you? That's a much more interesting question as far as everyone's concerned. Yourself included, I should think. You can call me Clara. Before you enter the town and embark, and embark on your uh, cleansing agenda, I'd like to give you a few pieces of advice. You are, after all, a mere hatchling. I rather doubt you arrived at the cemetery with your own M.O. already laid out, if you pardon the pun. Please do tell me. Time won't wait for you. Hour after hour, day after day, it will run out fast. You're not the center of the universe. Not even now that you have this truly exceptional part to play. At some point, you may even feel that you could easily be everywhere at once. But make no mistake, the town is changing with time, and there's nothing you can do about it. We'll see about that. Time has the final say in the matters of life and death. It may so happen that you will knock on the door of a person you need when that person is already past being able to answer you. The news changes too. What was on a person's mind a day ago will have a, will have petered out come tomorrow. And it may have been something you'd have found useful. Pray, why speak of such terrible things? It's not like I have a say in matters of anyone's life and death, time or no time. <laughs> Haven't had a laugh like this in quite a while. If you don't have a say, who does? Who but you, my blessed child, is holding in her hands the lives and deaths of others? But be careful with your terrible gift. Every death will count against you. No amount of trickery is too much. No price is too high for maintaining a viable reputation. Reputation? Yes, you will have a reputation too, my dear child. And I don't think you'll find that sullen horse easy to tame. It will be full of surprises. Your reputation will be falling, always, relentlessly. And it's decisive in it, you know, everything. How many friends you've got, how many enemies. Trust opens the right doors and the right lips. Why will it always be falling? I'm a good person. But people are convinced to the contrary. You will exist in several guises here. The guise that will live in the collective mind. And, one may speculate, the collective memory is the most terrifying one. Every day, people will witness signs of your otherworldly nature. They will be frightened. No, I will be remembered for my mercy, and always spoken of in praise. You'll see. People will always appreciate your help, and I can sh assure you a lot of people are going to need help these days. Relieving sufferers from their misery is appreciated a great deal. Sometimes a person is in such pain that even euthanasia will be a blessing, especially for the incurable. Oh. Okay. Do I have a good reputation now? Right now? Search me. But that's easy to find out. In fact, it's generally a good idea not to neglect checking up on your status. Has my kind-hearted colleague spoken to you about it yet? He hasn't. Most importantly, don't forget to stop by the caretaker's lodge. You've got people awaiting you there, and there are no doubts about, and they have no doubts about your identity. As it happens, they've just drawn proof of your arrival from a pile of oracle bones. Your turning up in person will duly impress them. Tarry not. I'll remember to do that kindly, teacher. Thank you. Me? I'm not much of a teacher, more like your faithful servant. I'm here because of you, you know. It's you who are the kindly teacher. As you wish. I'm so small. Hello. How small you are, how frail. Will you survive in this horrible world? You're talking as if I were a newborn baby. Aren't you? You'll have to be taught to eat, drink, sleep, move around, heal yourself, even to breathe. This place drains your health all too fast. Even a seasoned person must stay alert. Not everyone manages to cope. Teach me kindly mask. 
How can I stay in good health? We're dying every minute of our lives. Thousands of selves dissolve, melt, burst like bubbles in a froth. You must, must replenish your strength several times a day. If you allow yourself to be overcome with exhaustion, or your hunger becomes unbearable, you will be dying even faster than usual. And usual is fast enough as it is. It's the air in this place. I'm so tired. It's as if I've been sweet sleepwalking all night. You can buy food at a shop. If money is a problem, various current comestibles can be picked up at residential houses. But those are closed except during an emergency. And should you break into one using a lockpick, be nimble. The inhabitants will defend your property. So what am I to do? You can take anything you want at the mansions of those destined for the leading roles in this unfolding drama, such as the custom of hospitality with the local aristocracy and those who try to imitate them. What sort of people are they? You will soon learn to spot them among the populace. Their houses stand out. By the way, this is also where you can find a bed to get some replenishing sleep in, provided, of course, that you don't give the owners a reason to shut the door in you. Where can I buy useful things around here? You can spot a shop by its sign. They're for selling useless items as well as buying useful ones. And some of the people in the street will gladly barter things they wouldn't sell you for money. There's illicit trade going on at a couple of secret spots. But a lady so young would be wise not to set foot in those dens. Or for that matter, talk about them. So there are things no one will sell me, right? Should your reputation on the importance of which my surly colleague has been meaning to speak to you, sink so low as to lose you the trust of even the most desperately reckless, which describes all merchants, you won't be able to buy even the most harmless of articles. But reputation can be restored. What else can you teach me? Essentially, this is it for now. Don't forget to stop by the caretaker's lodge. Awaiting you there is Katerina, who will be a better mentor and a support than myself in these difficult first days. You're lucky to have her on your side. Being as she is a mistress as well as wife to our ruler, the fearsome Alexander. Very lucky indeed. Sweet. Save our game. Hi girlies. I'm so much shorter than them. The grave diggers have scattered. Where are they? Katarina. You are a herald. You've been brought here by fate itself. Where did you come from, girl? Tell me your name. I'm Clara. That's who I am. I saw the lights and thought I may be welcome here. I'm cold. Yes, that is right. I have been waiting for you, Clara. We have many things to talk about. And why have you been waiting for me? Please do tell me. No, not in here. Listen, you need to go to my house. Report to my husband, the ruler Alexander. He will take care of you. And I will be there later, when Grace and I are finished with our business. If I am guessing who you are correctly, then we are all saved. Are you in danger? Yes. The bones say we are in the danger the likes of which have not been seen on this earth. Go to our house, Clara. If you are who we have been waiting for, you will have no trouble getting there, and no one will threaten you on your way. I'll do as you say. Sweet. I'm soaking wet. Surely you're not going to hurt a poor caretaker's daughter, are you? I may be useful to you yet. If I die, who's going to look after the graves? You don't say so, my dear. Who do you take me for? You've got me mixed up with someone else, right? I think... They've fallen out of love with me. See? My lady has come to find out what the dead are saying about fate. And what are they saying? They're saying they've already vacated seven of the nine corners of their house for the guests that are due. 
All of the house's inhabitants are now crammed into the remaining two corners. Can you imagine the harvest that death is about to reap? Oh, scary. I can picture vividly this house with the dead crowded in those corners, expecting the many guests. And my lady doesn't want to believe it. She says the future can be changed. This is her pity talking. Where did you come from? I thought you were going to stay at grandfather's. You only went there yesterday evening, after all. What are you talking about? Well, there was a girl, the spitting image of you. She came here just before you did. It wasn't dark yet. And then she went to grandfather. Have you seen her with your own eyes? Just like I'm seeing you now. It must have been my sister. I'll let the good scholar examine the deadly powders. We'll put him to the test. So what are you waiting for? You need a warm place, a meal and a bath. Look, you are all covered in earth and something red. Is that clay? And what about you? Go, I will follow. Perhaps I will be at the rod even before you get there. Yes, Lady Katerina. Only in things of small value, they usually are bold enough not to trust to appearances. And how will I find your house? The rod is in the Tanner's district. It stands upon a cape where the gullet flows into the Gorkin. Head northwest and don't cross any bridges. You can tell our house by the tall tower. I'll find it. Control S. How do I save? How do I quick save? Wait. Settings? How do I quick save? F5. Oh. F5. I forgot. Hmm. But my reputation is shit. Have shit. Nice. This is such a stealth game now. Afraid. Will they see me? Will they see me? They don't see me. Oh, thank God. <gasps> Look, it's slivery. I can't pick it up, probably, though. I can. Cool. Hi, Sabarov. I will restore the order here, rest assured. You are standing before Alexander Sabarov, one of the rulers of this town. He must be Clara, I suppose. Yes, that's right. Have I done something to make you angry? My wife Katerina said you had been sent seen at the cemetery. The late caretaker's daughter claims that you had crawled out of a fle fresh grave, the appearance of which could not be accounted for. Is this true? Yes, I woke in an earthen pit. It didn't look like a grave, just a pit in the middle of a cemetery. But that's not a crime, is it? Your coming is a sign. You are a link in a whole chain of mysterious coincidences. Do you know that it's dangerous for you to even go out in the street? Are you aware that the powerful, kind family has put a bounty on your head? An envoy of theirs just left and I promised them I'd help catch the criminal by all means possible. The criminal? 
The head of one of the ruling families died last night. His murderer is said to be a woman similar to you in appearance. The description largely matches. The common folk, blinded by local superstitions, are blaming a mystical creature spawned by the earth under mysterious circumstances at night. Is there anything you have to say to that, Clara? It wasn't me! Look into my eyes! Do you believe me? I don't know why, but for some reason I trust you. I get this strange feeling as though I have known you for a long time. And that makes me suspicious, Clara. Pointing as it does to the fact that you control an otherworldly power of some kind. I do have inexplicable powers. I've always had them. But I've always thought of it as a blessing. It's good, not evil. Why then are you being called a thief? I do believe Larchinus' skills are the exclusive domain of the wicked. Who's calling me a thief? That is something you'll have to ask my wife. She too possesses mysterious powers. Specifically, she has prophetic dreams. It has been proven over many years that these dreams do come true. They have been her main source of knowledge about you. It's actually the other way around. My hands have the gift of healing. I can cure the most terrible diseases with my hands. I've cured cancer. I even brought someone back from the dead once. Everyone said I'd make a miracle happen. Indeed. You are a miracle worker. That makes you almost a saint. Yes, a status like that precludes accusations of murder and theft. But then explain to me the meaning of those coincidences. If not for my blind faith in my wife's words, I would have no doubt that you are an evil spirit, a spawn of the netherworld. And if you don't explain that mystery at once, I swear even Katerina's influence will not save you. Wait, I'll tell you. I have a twin sister. She looks exactly like me, is named the same, and wears the same clothes. I, I fear that she was the one who committed all those horrible crimes. Alright, have it your way. I accept this explanation, and I believe you. Thank you for believing me. I've just had to tell a lie for the first time in my life. To invent a fictional sister and shift all those outrageous accusations on her. Strange I could even utter the words. But I promise, I promise when it all clears up I'll explain myself and then do that lie. So what are you capable of, Clara? Tell me more about your miraculous abilities. I can cure various diseases using my hands. I know that already. Anything else? I can induce a hypnotic state in people, provided they consent, of course. Then they will answer any question truthfully. Enough. I need time to make up my mind. Now go outside, walk around the house, and you will get to my wife's side. Afterwards, come back to me. If your conversation yields no unpleasant surprises, I shall decide on your future from then on. All right, I'll do as you say. Anything else to say? What has this town turned into? Truly a country of contradictions. Indeed, you do look more like a messenger from above than a spawn of the earth. That is true. stomach hurts as if I was filled with straw. The vision is becoming real. This doubtlessly is the one of those two. Yet which one? I must be on my guard. May I come in? I'm cold. You are a herald. You've been brought here by fate itself. Come closer, Clara. Do you know that I, Katerina Sabrova, am clairvoyant? I can commune with the mysterious forces that permeate this land. Magic has no power over me. I can see into the future. Tell me, do you question my abilities? I 
have such abilities too. I'm not one to doubt the existence of supernatural or supernatural or bleh, supernatural powers. The visions, they're not all the same. Some of them are clear, some are hazy. But a recent vision was straightforward and vivid. A vision of such power that even a materialist would not question its divine provenance. I've had a vision of the chaos to come, of the doom of all our creations, of the earth swallowing our town. If it's all true, it's horrible. There was a prophecy of twin angels. It spoke of a harbinger of death, the imminent disaster incarnate, who is to come to the town along with a holy healer who can perform miracles with her hands and deliver us from evil. Now I understand who is standing before me. Tell me, are you yourself aware of your calling? I thought I was a mere modest servant of virtue. Yes, yes, that is correct. All that remains is to interpret that dream. A dream is always an allegory. Before I saw you, before I heard you speak, I had been thinking of other pairs of twins, Simon and Georgie Kine, Andrew and Peter Stamaton. Even those visitors, the Harrispex and the Bachelor, had seemed to be the harbingers from my dream. But now I see where the truth lies. So you believe me? I am fully convinced that the prophecy was referring to you. But others will need to better prove than that. Do as my husband said and prove that you are who I think you are, and we will stand by you. The ruling couple and the holy harbinger. What does that mean? It means that if you stand before our people in all your glory, fulfill your destiny and don't abandon us afterwards, we will adopt you as our daughter. When I die, I will pass on to you the power of the spirit and your heart's chosen one will inherit the power of the sword from my husband. Why are you speaking as if you were reciting a psalm? Because there are no other words to speak properly of such things, and as for you, obedience will suit you much better than a waywardness at this time. You are in too questionable a position, and it is beyond my power to change that on my own. I fear nothing, my conscience is clear. Now go, to Alex now, go to Alexander. Be brave, no matter what he asks you. You have nothing to be afraid of, for I see that you are the true harbinger. Such things can neither be changed nor hidden from me. Time has proven that I do not make mistakes. Fear nothing and return triumphant. All right, I'm going. Anything else to say? It is as if my temples were pierced with needles. Do something. Now look here. Since you are holding the threads of life in your wondrous hands, I am going to entrust you with several people. They are all wicked people. Their souls are as black as soot. Each one of them is either an avowed evildoer or hiding a sinister secret. You must take care of them. I don't understand. Taking care of evildoers? If you are a kind angel, a holy miracle worker sent to us from heaven, who else but you could discern some virtue inside their lost souls, convert them, redeem them, forgive them? But that is not the reason I am asking you to take care of them. There are many in our town who need to be purified. There are many worse villains than these. And yet these ones are special. Special to you, Clara. Why? Trust me, I know. I can see into the future. The sinners who I will now name will be of use to you in due time. In what way, I know not. But I know that they will be. The likelihood is fairly great. So make sure that they live unless you should yourself see it more fit that they die. Is this agreed? Agreed. If I am able to do it, that is. And now hear me. All that I have told you is between you and I alone. Don't say a word about anything. 
Most importantly, keep it from my husband. All right, have it your way. Bad grief, Stan, Stock Rubin, Aspiri, Yulia, Anna, Alexander, Katerina, Lara, and the foreman. What the hell was that? Just shaking her hands at me. What are you doing here? Don't mind me. <gasps> Ooh! A place for me? I never noticed this. Was it closed? That's okay, I'll make it. I'm made of wood. I'm made of wood. <laughs> Indeed, you do look more... Okay, whatever. Katerina told me her dreams. It all fits. She believes I am a messenger from above. Alright. My wife is clairvoyant, but I am not. I need something to make sure that you are exactly who you claim to be. I'm going to give you a few tasks. Let your actions prove that your hands have power over people's lives and your words over their minds. I am ready. I have nothing to worry about. I have received reports of a fight at the station this morning. Several men were killed, several more maimed. I have dispatched two loyal men there. They will tell you where the dead and the wounded have been carried off. See if anything can be done. But it could be dangerous. If you are truly the prophesied messenger from above, you have nothing to fear. Nothing will harm you. The murderer has fled. The whole town is searching for them. Wherever they are now, that place is far from the station. Go and fear nothing. And what if I don't succeed this time? After all, I can't control this power. It's coming from beyond. If not this time, then another time. Kill a man by nightfall for me. In the presence of a witness, or preferably witnesses. This will strengthen our position. I will then have legitimate grounds for protecting you against the kind's wrath. Alright, I'll do everything as you say. So the kinds come. So the kinds. Uh, whatever. I'm kind of exhausted. Could sleep for like one hour. Let's go. F five. Okay, what voice did I give him before? I'm angry. And I hurt. Why so? Why? Because first I get chased away into this step by my soul and I have mates. And then I run into a ripper there to boot. Boy, was I begging him to let me go. But the bastard knew what I'd been picked on for. Then pulled out his knife. And here I am, curved up like so much fillet. It hurts. Help me, will you? Why did they do it to you? Well, I suppose I had done what an, was a mighty rotten thing to do and mucked it up like an idiot at that. So my former soul and a half mates, they threw me out, called me a traitor and all that, hunted me. But I'm a slick one. I saved myself. Thought I'd made, thought I'd made it out. And what do you know, along comes Leather Sack. Leather sack? Some ripper I'd never seen around here before. And he's like, stop right there, I'ma question you. Are you wanted for such and such crimes? Are you carrying valuables on your person? Etc, etc. And then whack he goes with that razor. But I wriggled myself free, saved myself again. And then wobbled my way to this place, and then... 
did you do to cross the boys? Look me in the eye and speak honestly, or else forget about getting help from me. Ah. Uh, honestly, it was pretty bad. You see, there's those schmouder things. You know, powder schmouders. We had an outbreak a couple of years ago. We called it a sand pest. It would burn up your blood. So these schmouders, they helped if you caught it. There are still some left, but they're hard to come by. And? Eh. And now there was this rumor about the pest being back and even a couple of folks, uh, what's the word, a sick coming to it. And one of our lot had a schmouder, was saving it for his sister in case she thought she caught the sand pest. Basically, I, you know, stole it. What for? Yourself? Nah, not for myself. Our gang, the soul and a half, is at war with another gang, the dogheads. Quite a fight it is. Last drop of blood and all. The dogheads outnumber us, and they set up the, their lair at the tower. And the tower is a dream tower of pure gold, if you like. You would understand. So I thought I'd switch sides with that schmouder as an admission fee. So you stole medicine from a friend who might need it to save her sister's life, and you did it so you could become a more desirable sellout, right? What does it matter? Everyone steals, everyone sells out, it's in our nature. Whoever isn't a thieving man is a thieving woman. <laughs> the real nasty part is that when my scheme was out, the fool rushed me and tried to take his schmatter back, so I... waited for the right moment and offed him. Good grief. Do you at least feel some remorse? Oh yes, yes, I'm all remorse and penitence. Just do something, stop the bleeding at least, tie it with a hanky, would you? See how the bastard has sliced me into ribbons with that razor of his? Ah, just let me get to him. I'll tie him up and give him twice the pain he gave me. Be quiet and hold still. I'm going to lay my hands on you and you'll get better. I like it. Oh, I already have two. <laughs> I, I was hoping for a schmouder, but sure. So, you can kill evildoers with a single touch. Truly a godly gift. I didn't mean to. I wanted to heal him. I, I felt sorry for him. Then must have been the supreme judgment. With you as the judge, yes. It makes sense. Had he deserved to live, you'd have given him life, right? But the murderer deserved to die, so you dealt him death. Yes, it's much like what the mistress foretold. I see you're well informed. I suppose you're religious, faithful man. Do you read mystical and spiritual books? Don't touch me, please. I'm as full of sin as they come. What if that's enough for your touch to kill me? My master would surely be interested. But you were meaning to heal. You had better find someone else. That's why he sent you here for, right? Who? Where do I find a person like that? Well, how about that one who made a lucky escape from robbers? He survived that massacre and avoided the corpse eaters, so fate must be favoring him. Bring this one back to life, if you wish to, of course. Will you be able to find him yourself? But how? Those people were wondering if he had crawled away eastwards into the steppe. He must have been from the steppe himself, a local, so he'd want to be buried in living earth. If he's still breathing and has made it there, then the cemetery caretaker's daughter must have given him shelter. Ah, I know her. One of the dying victims tried to make his way to the cemetery. Perhaps Grace saw him. Yeah. Ooh. Mind what you're doing, though. Stay alert. Anything can happen. Look at my footprints carefully. You may notice something unusual. What's that mean? Oh. Robbers. Should I kill them? Let's try killing them. The 
this step it should be fairly easy. Come on. that worth it? I got two rings. My health's half what it was before. But I guess it was like a little reputation boost still. <gasps> a kid! No, 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 no. Get back here. Get back here. Hi guys. He who loans a minute owes a year in interest. Oh, we've heard an earful about you here we have. Some thief you are. Hasn't it occurred to you, old little Todd, that taking your leave right now is not gonna be an easy job? Or even doable at all? Why, I did think of an exit strategy beforehand. Do you have a soul, thief? Now that's a question I didn't expect. Smart thief, you. I'll surprise you many times yet, thief. A fool's tongue is long enough to cut his own throat. Ain't that a brave little Todd? Look, she ain't afraid of me. Show me the prohibited things. I know you're selling them. Good. Okay, that's a lot of money. I can't use these ones, can I? Ooh. Well, it was nice seeing you, Grief. Please, kids, 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 kids. kids. No kids. Bog. Okay, okay, I'm going, I'm going. Hey, Grace. He is ruthless. That man with the snake skin coat. He doesn't know compassion. You're back. What did grandfather say? Tell me, has an injured man come to your lodge lately? How do you know? That's what I've heard from the people who were robbing the dead at the station. Be careful, if they find out you gave him shelter, they'll come for you too. No one would dare to touch me. Least of all a robber. There's no one villainous enough here to pull a knife to me. That's what my father used to tell me. And that's how it's always been. Why do they honor you so much? For feeding them, long after no one else would. For singing songs to their ancestors and comforting those slain at their hands. So where's your wounded man? Yes, an injured workman did come crawling here. He was all but dead, so I went to find him a good spot. I'd almost settled on a grave by the far wall when I thought on burying him in your pit. The one you spent the night in, I mean. When I returned, there was a visitor at the lodge. A robber? No. Leaning over the wounded worker was the scary man who's inflicted all those wounds on him in the first place. I asked him not to kill the workman, but to heal him with living blood instead. And he, the scary one, said nothing for a long time. There was just the sound of his wheezy breath. But then he took the workman and dragged him off somewhere. To his den, he said. 
Who was that scary man? He is of warden stock. He knows the lines of the body. He can heal people and is allowed to cut a body. He said his name was Artemy Burak. But I am afraid he will kill the wounded man instead of healing him. The workman was, after all, his enemy. He had attacked Burak in the morning and injured him. And where is this Burak's then? I don't know, but I think it must be nearby. He was in a bad state himself, so he couldn't have walked far with a limp body on his hands. Hiding in the works, perhaps? Or at the runaway hospice? But now that I think of it, his shoes were covered in grey clay, which you only get around the works. Thank you, Grace. Well, I'll try to find him. Find him. The Ripper carried the dying wounded man off to his lair. I sure know where his lair is. I've been there quite a lot. your dead man oh no did you kill him I'm bleeding again uh, okay wow shit we have to give Artemy a voice aha uh -huh. are those your crimes that the entire town is now hunting me for I mean how blind does one have to be to mix us up I'm Clara and you I'm Barack Artemy Barack don't hurt me, please. They're trying to catch a Shabanaka deer. It's a local fairy tale, as far as I remember. So what's your business here? Grace, the caretaker at the cemetery, said you'd brought a wounded man here. I did. And what of it? I need him. Who sent you? No one. I've come of my own accord. Then what the hell are you doing here? I I'm looking for the wounded man. As you can see, there's no wounded man here anymore. He vanished while I was away. And that's strange, since he couldn't walk on his own. He must have been kidnapped. By who? What do you mean, vanished? I brought the wounded man here, examined him. He was beyond hope. Then I went to get my tools. When I came back, he was gone. That was ten minutes ago. The trail of blood led back to the town. I saw blood on the embankment, too. But that doesn't tell us a lot. So I've lost him. Where could he go? And why didn't you follow him yourself? It's better for me to stay out of the town. Every passerby rushes to tackle me and tie me up. I wonder what I did to deserve this ripper frame. I'll look for him on the embankment. He may have found shelter at one of the houses. The dying man strikes lead to this house. I must hurry there. Thanks, Artemy. Uh. Oh, I can sleep in this bed. Fun. Bye bye, Artemy. I feel like such a gremlin. Just. So small, going around, little rat. Honestly, I've been trying to find recently a game that would make me feel the way Pathologic does, but I just I can't find anything of that sort. It's just like, how can you describe this game? It's like completely one of a kind. It's just so. I don't know, there's something so special about it. 
Oh no, will the girls run away from me too? Please don't run away from me. They will. Fuck. I need to get my reputation up. A scene we got here. A bachelor. What? What do you want from me? Are you looking for shelter too? My, you're so pretty. What's your name? Anna. Anna Angel. When I was small, it's what they called me for my beautiful singing voice. And what's your name? My name is Clara. Don't be scared of me. Why is he interrogating the bound? That big city snake. It would seem that I haven't lived in this house long enough for its walls to protect me. First that wretch bursts in and bleeds on my carpet, then a certain bachelor drops by, and here he is, already acting like he owns the place. And this... is this your house? In a manner of speaking, to a degree, a degree that I feel used to be a good deal higher, God, why is the world filled with predators? Wherever you run, from coast to coast, no place is safe from them. They murder, they rape, they tear apart, they threaten, they destroy. Are you talking about the bachelor? I find him menacing too. He doesn't look cruel. You think he's the actual monster from the steppe, whose coming was announced today? The terrible doll made of human bones? No, I don't think so. The Shabnak always seeks to assume the shape of a woman. Yes, it's those exact bones that I feel in him. He's somehow... not real. Like an animated straw man. Don't you argue with him, though. He represents the law now, and the law is not on our side. What? The law? Shh, yes. You and I are outlaws. The law is a grindstone, heavy as a bell, inexorable and persistent. You need a certain amount of power to stand up to it. But where do you get it? And so many of us here don't really have a choice. We are doomed to be victims. Why are you counting me among them? You know, I recognized you at once, I did. Aren't you being persecuted? Aren't you being called a thief? Haven't you had the words Shabnak, Turnskin, Maneater thrown in your face? Haven't they looked for bones under your skin? Or dropped swivery juice in your eyes? Quiet! He's listening! This blood-covered tramp is not who I'm looking for. He's not complicit in Simon's death. At any rate, he's about to kick it no matter if I help along or not. I'm done here. No, wait. A lot points to Simon having been murdered by a girl. And this dirt under her clothes. I suppose I ought to interrogate you. One wonders if you have an alibi. Wait, he's not dead yet, is he? No, but he will be soon. He's lost so much blood that only a miracle could revive him. I can work miracles. Curious. And how do you go about doing that? I lay my hands on someone in pain and they are brought back to life. So not only are half the people here psychics, turns out the other half are faith healers. What kind of town is this? What kind of a time? I've been transported to the Middle Ages. I presume you can demonstrate your art right here in front of me. I can. Watch. She's down now. How did you manage that? I've had this gift for as long as I can remember. Unbelievable. I myself sometimes find it hard to believe what I'm capable of. Are you some kind of saint? I'm a miracle worker. Yeah. So you can heal with your hands. 
for real? Yes. And and you could cure any disease? Yes. I will be your friend, girl. What else can you do? A lot of unusual things. People believe that I'm a miracle worker. We Well, we got a reputation up and another plot point out of the way, so we're gonna end for today. Bye bye!